Hi all, I'm Lassian, and today we're going to turn all of this into this. For the shorts, I was able to find a longer pair at a secondhand store, so I marked the length that I wanted, and because they were so stretchy, I was able to fold all the extra underneath and double check that it was the correct length for my comfort level. I laid the shorts flat and marked down one and a half inches from my finished hem line. Then I cut along the line. This gave me three quarters of an inch that I could fold twice, which would give me a double fold hem. That way there was no raw edges on the inside. I laid the other leg flat and took the excess I had cut off the first leg and cut along the top edge so that the legs would be the same length in the end. I wanted to stitch these from the right side so I turned them right side in. Then I double folded towards the wrong side so that all the extra folds were on the wrong side and stitched it down just with a straight stitch. I highly recommend stitching it from the wrong side so you can see exactly where you need to stitch, and that way you can stitch right on the edge of that double fold. It'll give you a nice, clean edge, and from the right side, it'll just be one line of stitching. I also made sure to clip all my threads as I finished each seam. Once it was done, I tried the shorts on again and made sure that they were the right length. The next piece that I wanted to work on was the necktie, because that seemed relatively easy to me. The main consideration for this piece was the color. Apart from that, I wanted something with a little bit of stretch and a little bit of body, so it actually would keep its shape while it was on me. So I ended up with a stretch twill fabric. I got four inches or 10 centimeters width of a fabric and folded that in half because that was the overall width of what I wanted for the necktie. I knew it was way too long based on what I actually needed to tie around my neck. So I just took one end, did a double knot at the center, and then marked where that end piece was going to be. In the official artworks, hers does look like a double knot in the center. Yeah, <laughs> so that's all I did. Made sure it was the length that I wanted and then just marked on the other side exactly the width length that I wanted. I laid it down and cut off all the excess, then double checked that I had the correct side of what I had cut, which I did. To mark the ends, I folded it once in half lengthwise, good sides together. Then I folded it in half widthwise so that I could just draw the triangle diamond shape on the end and cut it and then have both ends be the exact same. To sew the necktie, I started at one end on the side that had the fold, sewing that diamond shape and then going all the way down the long edge till about a couple inches shy of the halfway point. Then I took a moment to stop sewing and clip my extra threads, always clip as you go, and trim around the two corner sides so that when I flipped it inside out it would be nice and pretty. Then I started a couple inches down from where I had stopped sewing and sewed all the way down the rest of the edge and around that other corner to the folded edge again. This meant that when I had clipped all those corners again, I had an open spot in the middle that I could use to flip everything right side out. And what's not shown here, because my battery died and I didn't realize, is that once I had everything flipped right side out, I actually took a moment to hand sew the little gap that was left in the center closed so that everything was nice and finished. Then it was just a matter of giving it a very quick and bad try on to make sure that it had the right idea overall. The dress was next and it all started with the fabric. The fabric that I chose was a really lightweight chiffon because I wanted it to be very flowy and be able to gather nicely without adding too much bulk. I just went and looked until I found a color that I liked, which was a blue with a touch of green in it. The one issue with chiffon is that it shifts very, very easily and can be very frustrating to sew with if you're not used to sewing with finicky and tricky materials. So although it's perfect for this, it's not always recommended when you're first starting to sew. Because chiffon is such a slippery fabric, the very first thing that you want to do is pin it along the selvage edge to help it stop from shifting around. 
The first mark we're going to put down will be 2 inches up from the cut edge and 1 inch in from the selvage edge. Then, moving upwards, we're going to measure from the waistline to the bust line. This is going to be the next mark, mark 2. To get from mark 2 to mark 3, still along that selvage edge, it'll be from the apex bust to the neck point. The neck point is about where your neck meets your shoulder, right at the very top of you. And we're always measuring along the front for these front measurements. From the second mark, measure across the fabric half of the bust front measurement. This is our center front, which we'll then draw all the way down and all the way up. Along the waistline portion, which is in line with mark one, we're going to measure a quarter of our waist measurement out from the center front line we just set on either side. Then we're going to connect it along the salvage up to that bust line. Two inches above the bust line is going to be our new underarm point, and we're gonna make another mark there. We extend that center front line all the way up and use a right angle to connect it to the shoulder point marking. Then you take the measurement from your center neck to your neck point and mark that coming out from your center front line towards your salvage edge. Then measure the neck depth and mark that down the center front line. This is just wherever it sits comfortably on you. Then just make a nice scoop from those two points together and you've created your neckline. Measure from to the end of the shoulder and add one inch because Imogen does have a dropped shoulder. You can connect that line very lightly. The next step is to actually add a quarter of an inch up at the neck point and then go down a quarter of an inch lower at the shoulder point and connect those for your actual shoulder seam. Then we're going to connect the underarm point to the shoulder point, making a scoop as you can see here and making sure that it's a right angle at both edges. Very quickly, you can see I added about half an inch at the waistline there on the side, just to give myself a little extra space when I go to fit it. Then I connected my far waistline measurement by going up about one inch and then connecting it on a diagonal to that neck point. I took a moment to remeasure myself from the waist to the bust line along the side seam, because for me that is actually shorter than it is at center front. I made note of the new measurement along that side towards the selvage edge, marked it down, and then connected it back towards the waistline. I took the new bust to waist measurement and used it again on the folded edge of the fabric starting two inches up. I then also included the two inches from that for the underarm measurement. I then measured my neck point to bust point along my back and marked that down from the bust point. I used my measurements from the front piece to figure out exactly where I wanted front neck, or back neck in this case, and the shoulder point to be along the shoulder line. I then measured down an inch and a half from the center back neck, which is along the fold, and made another curve from that neck point to the bottom neck point to have the back neck. Then I raised the neck point up a quarter of an inch and then lowered it down a quarter of an inch at the shoulder as we had on the very front. And at this point, I realized that I had drawn all my shoulder points from the underarm measurement, not the bust measurement, and had to redo those last few steps of the shoulder in order to make it actually correct and not two inches too tall. I took the half back bust measurement and marked that out from the bust line, moving it up the two inches to meet the underarm line, and then made a swoop from that mark all the way up to the top of the shoulder, making sure to do right angles where it met the underarm and where it met the top of the shoulder. I then measured out a quarter of the waist measurement along that waistline and connected it up to the bust line along that outer side. I pinned all the fabric on the pattern pieces together to make sure that nothing would shift around. I personally don't need to draw seam allowance so I can just cut extra out and still leave enough seam allowance. If you're not comfortable doing that, I highly recommend taking the time to draw an extra half inch around all of your seams and then one inch at the waist seam to make sure that you have enough fabric to actually sew everything together. As you can see here, I'm just kind of doing it by eye and sometimes that works fine and sometimes it doesn't. I also took a moment to measure the underarm seam on both the front and back as I went because this will come in handy when we're actually making the sleeve pattern itself. The sleeve cuff was the next piece to pattern, and it was super easy. I just measured the meaty part of my forearm, just below my elbow, and marked that length down, plus one inch, half an inch each side of seam allowance, on my fabric. I then took the width of it, which was going to be two inches for me, and doubled that. I marked that down on one side, uh, at two inches and at four, 
and then measured that length again of my forearm measurement, and again did the four inches on the other side, making a large rectangle, because this is going to be a piece that we fold in half to create a nice finished cuff. Then I pinned it to make sure it wouldn't shift and cut it out, giving myself seam allowance as I cut again. To start the sleeve, we need the length of the sleeve. I measured from that shoulder point all the way down to the meaty part of my arm where we took the cuff measurement. I added two inches to that just to give myself a little extra breathing room. And then when I started to mark on the fabric, I started two inches up from the selvage edge. I'm always a fan of giving yourself more than enough room to work with because you can always take things in. It's very hard to let things out. I also pinned the fabric ahead of time because at this point it just wanted to shift non-stop. And that is very frustrating when you're trying to make a pattern. <laughs> then I took that forearm measurement and timesed it by two. You can see me putting it down on the fabric and gathering it together to the correct width just to make sure that it actually looks the way I wanted to and was gathered enough. Once I was happy with that, I marked down that width measurement, again, the forearm times two, and put a notation about where the middle of that was. This becomes the center of the sleeve and goes all the way up to that top length mark. After that, I measured from the top down eight inches, which gives us the approximate area of the bicep. I measured my bicep itself to make sure it was wide enough, but what I ended up doing was taking the bottom width and minusing two inches on either side just to make sure it was a little bit of a bell shape, but not too much of a bell shape. I measured out from the center point half of each of those measurements. Which again, as the fabric was shifting, was not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> Sleeves are bell shapes along the top, with the curve being the very top center. You can see me putting the measuring tape here to make sure that it's at least wider than the armhole measurement that we had taken. This is so that we can do a bit of a gather along the top and make sure that it's still going to look right. It's not a perfect way of doing a sleeve, but it is a quick and easy way of doing it. The more sleeves you draft and the more patterns you work with, the better you have an idea of what shape it should be. I also then connected the bottom hemline to that new underarm line from the bicep area. And again, just drawing that general bell shape is what makes a sleeve a sleeve. It ends up being flat across the very top where you put your center mark, and it should be flat on the very sides along that bicep line as well. Once that was done, once again, it was time to pin everything together. And if you wanted to add your seam allowance, this is when you would do it. Again, I just cut it all out, giving everything a half an inch. I also take a moment to notch the very center line at the top because that lines up to the shoulder seam when we sew everything. And the last piece to pattern is the skirt. Along the selvage edge, I measured down the length from my waist to mid shin, which is the length of the skirt. And then I added a full inch of seam allowance at the top and two inches of seam allowance at the bottom. Again, it's easier to take stuff off than it is to put stuff on. From that new mark, I measured in one quarter of the waist measurement plus one inch seam allowance. Now this is a little extra seam allowance, but this ends up being one eighth of the skirt, so it gives a nice full gather. I extended that mark all the way across to the folded edge, and then I measured from that new line the length again in the opposite direction. Then I measured in from the folded edge that quarter of a waist measurement plus one inch. Then I connected those two waist measurements together, which gave me a rectangle with a diagonal line through it, <laughs> which may seem odd, but it gives a nice amount of width to the bottom of the skirt while still having the waist only be double the waist measurement. At this point, it was time to pin everything together. I pinned in a few key places to make sure everything wouldn't shift, and then I picked up the fabric and folded it in half along that very top edge. This way, when I cut everything apart, I would actually be cutting four pieces of fabric instead of two. I repinned all those pins I had just done so that they caught all the fabric. Then I cut along the top edge and bottom edge, cutting that fold into two different pieces. I cut that diagonal line because we had already put the seam allowance into it. This is the one pattern that we're going to make that you don't actually have to add seam allowance because we've included it in the rest of our measurements already. 